Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the Good Life experience. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so excited once again to come your way today on your favorite Good Life Devotion because this is God's answer to the heart cry of many who have been looking for the truth of God's word on a consistent basis. And God has sent us, revealed his truth to us, and given us the ability to come your way on many media platforms so that the Good Life Devotion which is God's voice to the nation to ripen the body of Christ and effect the greatest soul harvest, will be in every home transforming lives. This is why, because it is the effect of a move of the Spirit, we inspire you to be part of it. Recommend it to others. Spend time praying. We may not know you, but if you pray into the glory devotion, you have not wasted your prayer. Take it to other media platforms, even in your country or your state or your city. We may not even know that the Gula Devotion is playing somewhere. If you own a media house, make the Gula Devotion your station's program. You'll be amazed at your rewards when we step into the gates of eternity. And ensure that you pay also to get it to other media platforms. This week has been awesome. The Lord has been drawing our attention to our purpose on the earth as sons of God. You see, this earth, the Bible tells us that it will pass away. And if you are somebody who is hearing this for the first time, don't make a mockery of it because you'll be in scripture. The Bible says that in the end time, some will mock and say that, oh, when will the end come? This earth has been there, our grandfathers were there. If you think like that, your scriptures have cap captured you. Don't think like that. It is true. One day this earth and heaven will pass away, new earth and heaven will come. But we are not going to disconstitute. We are going to be there in the next phase of life. And the Bible tells us that our life for this season on the earth is a preparation for how things will be in the next phase. This is why God sends his messengers and he takes them in intimate moments, shows them the pictures of the times to come, and enables them to come and declare it to you here, so that you have no excuse. So concerning our purpose on the earth, once we are in Christ, Christ is a place where his workmanship created in Christ. Once you are in Christ, you will not get out of Christ except you denounce Christ. So, and in Christ is heaven. So why else are you here on the earth? Not so that you can fight to get into Christ again, or get into what you may call heaven, but so that through you, man will step into God's predestined plan. God's precious beings on the earth are men. That's why before he, he created man, he created everything else. So the plans were created for men, the sun is created for men, everything was created for men. Man is the reason for the earth. And so men are his precious beings. And he has a plan for all mankind. His plan is that men will receive his life and become beings of his class now and in the eternities to come. So any man, and I'm talking about humans in general, any man that has not received the life of God has missed God's plan for his life. 
And the most amazing but sobering fact is that we who have become sons of God now have this truth that they need. What love can you demonstrate to someone around you if you refuse to tell him of this truth that will help him to be where he should be? I always like to give this example that if you are traveling on a highway and a vehicle happened to have been involved in an accident and someone is caught up in maybe one side of the, one of the uh, doors of the car, it would be very wicked of you to drive past or walk past without trying to take the person out and take him to the hospital or something. And even the most wicked person on the earth, when he gets to that sin, will want to stop and help. And society will hail everybody. Oh, you delivered him. He would have died. You brought him to the hospital. Fine. There is a more serious death. But amazingly, many don't see it. And only sons of God are supposed to see. People in the world will not see that they are going on the way of death. But we know that they have been entrapped in an accident. And we need to take them out of it. And bring them into life. That is what the gospel is. Because on this earth that they are, some corruptions have taken place. And even though they have been reconciled, someone is fighting for their souls to get them to the wrong place. And we have what it takes the Apostle Paul said that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He said it is the power of God unto rescuing, unto salvation to everyone that will believe. But how can they believe on somebody that they have not heard? How can they hear if someone has not preached? And how can they, how can they be preached if they are not sent? That's why he sent us. We have been on this subject of you and the unregenerated. Your reason for living here after you have received Christ it's because God has assigned you to all those who have not yet been regenerated that will ever come into your scope of influence. Are you a teacher? Are you a nurse? Are you a carpenter? Are you a farmer? Are you a student? People don't just come to you for nothing. Be quick to take advantage of their coming around to share with them the truth that they need to be regenerated. Today I'm going to share briefly with you on the topic, live to please God only. One of the reasons why many of God's sons are unable to preach the gospel is because they live to please society, human society. And when we talk about this, this has nothing to do with being antisocial beings or disobedient to authorities. It has all to do with choosing to do the will of God. Our main scripture for today is Luke chapter 6, verse 26. It says that, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Of course, in this context, he was talking about prophets of religion who are not of God. But the word false prophet does not only refer to people that are involved in religious activity. If you look at the scenario of um, Paul with the, uh, in Paphos when he was preaching to the, the consul, the governor of the place, there was somebody called Bar Jesus. And the Bible calls him that sorcerer. The word he used there was magus, that's a Greek word. And it was talking about an oriental scientist. And it's a word that is used to refer to people with a unique form of knowledge, the aristocrats or the technocrats of the day, who have influence, who command the respect of their people. And they are generally called false prophets because what they will tell you will be against the word of God. So in general, what we are hearing here is that 
when men speak well of you because you are conforming to what people do that is against the will of God, says the word to you. Let me just take my time and read what we have here today. It says that when all is said and done, everyone will give an account to the Father. And let nobody deceive you about this. This is real and it will happen. The primary question we will answer to God is, did you fulfill what I made you for while you were on the earth? God is not going to ask you, did you marry? Because there were people that did not marry. You're not going to ask you, did you give birth to children? Did you buy a car? Did you buy a jet? Did you build a house? He's not going to ask you any of those questions. Because people did not have these things and they did what God asked them to do. That's not a question for everybody. Are you following this? He's going to ask you, did you fulfill what I made you for while you were on the earth? The child of God is here on the earth primarily for two things. To make sense of God out of humans. In other words, get those who have not been regenerated to be regenerated through the gospel. And to also contribute to the maturity of the body of Christ. So you have a two-fold ministry. One to the unregenerated and the other to the regenerated. To the unregenerated, you are supposed to get them the gospel to bring them into Christ as sons of God. When they become sons of God, you are supposed to contribute in one way or the other as you minister in the body of Christ to assist in their maturity to also fulfill their ministry. We said there that if you achieve everything else without fulfilling this mandate of God, you are a failure in the kingdom. You might have been called a success by people in the business world, a success by people in the political arena, a success by people in the educational sector, a success by family members. But if you have not lived your life actively involved in getting men into the kingdom and actively involved in getting sons of God mature to do the work of the ministry, you are a failure according to kingdom standard. If you are hearing me today, you are separated from being a failure in the kingdom. You are imparted here now with the grace to be a success in the kingdom. Listen, you can be a failure in the world and yet be a success in the kingdom. But if you fail in the kingdom, you are both a failure in the world and in the kingdom. Because the, the world's success will end. It will not be remembered in the next future. We put in the mass paper that many of God's children seem to have been crippled because of conformity to so-called secular standards of living. So their ability to preach the gospel is limited because they always find it more important to conform to secular standards. If we cannot preach in the market, we cannot preach at homes, we cannot preach at schools, we cannot preach at workplaces, then the gospel will be limited. Because not many people will come for crusades. And even now, in many places, you can't even hold crusades. So why are you going to get the people? We need to really wake up as sons of God. So you see, a Christian has a school. He will permit people to come and do health education there. He will permit businessmen to come and teach his teachers how to make uh, 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 savings. He will permit other things to come and happen there. And yet he will not permit someone to come and do evangelism to his students. And so he says, an education. Education uh, sector doesn't permit that. Are you a Christian? Then he says, yes, sir. No, no, no. You don't know why you're in business. What is the advantage of your Christian school? If the students in your school don't have first exposure to Christ... What is the advantage of your Christian business? No doubt many businesses are struggling like ordinary businesses. What's the advantage of your Christian institution? Are you a minister of government? 
and you have your office. There should be something in your office that communicates Christ for anyone that wants to see you as a minister of government. That is the advantage. You can't now go there and say, oh, oh no, this is politics and politics, there's no religion. Then Sunday go and sit in church. You don't know why you're in politics. And you don't know that the system that says that nobody should preach in your office as a politician, that same system is preaching another thing in, right in your office. I don't know why people are getting awakened to this. Sometimes you walk into an office and that same office has an environment like as if, oh, okay, no, you can't preach Jesus here. And they are playing an ungodly music in that room. Which law, whose uh, permission have they sought to play that song? When they wanted to play that song in your office, they didn't ask you permission. It is generally assumed that you agree to that song. And you yourself will not want a Christian song to be played in your office because you think, oh, when people come, it will be as if I'm doing religion. What kind of thinking is this? What is your Christian advantage? We shouldn't let the people of the world be smarter. If you have a taxi, you can sit in your taxi and expose your clients to the information of media. Your, 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 your taxi is always on uh, radio stations and they are talking things. And you could have played a message to edify people sitting in your taxi. Are you in, into the transportation business? Instead of always playing movies, when you are traveling from one city to the other, playing ungodly songs, why can't you use your buses to declare the truth? Because the bus is yours. I don't know why I'm getting this. It is time sons of God woke up and became more serious with our father's business. We are those who have made the things of our father look like they are not acceptable. They are. The reason is people need them. Okay, we are all teachers in the school. We can talk about football. It's not forbidden. We can talk about movie. It's not forbidden. Why can't we talk about Jesus? It is your mentality. The truth is, if you take schools out, you take workplace out, you take market out, you take every, or every one of these places out, there will be nowhere to reach people. The people are there. And the gospel is not for trees. Yes, we can declare the power of the gospel to liberate trees and things, but the gospel is for people, humans. And we must take the gospel to where the people are. They are in the schools. They are in the government offices. They are in the public places. They are in the transport offices. They are in the aircrafts. They are in the factories. So the reason why God keeps on promoting Christians into these fields is so that they will become the light. Don't be the light that has won that job. And go and become darkness. So imagine you are a Christian and you were blessed to win a political election to enter the parliament or be in a certain association. You don't go there and say, oh no, this thing, we don't do religion because you don't understand. You can't even sit there and be part of forming laws that are ungodly. We need to tell people the truth. This is why we live. We said here that we must gently, firmly, and strategically share the gospel without being disorderly and disobedient to authority. So this is not a call to just get anywhere and say, hey, I can preach here. Just go and be making noise anywhere. That's not the spirit of God. The spirit of God is orderly, but firmly. What we are sharing is to wake you up to the opportunities you are missing on a daily basis. If you are looking out for a point, we preach the gospel everywhere, but we are never disobedient or disorderly in any way. What we are sharing with you is only to plant in you the passion to awaken you to the truth. If that is in you, whichever way to go, you'll be able to do it and do it well. We don't shout. We don't bring disorder. order. 
For instance, you come where I neck and say, today I'm coming to preach the pilot. I'm going to sit where the pilot is. By all means. Now when they say, you can't enter the cockpit, say, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm a preacher of the gospel. I must be there. You can't do that. But there is a point. I remember one time we were about leaving uh, the airport and then someone sat, the, 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 I think they were changing the pilot. And the pilot sat by us. We were all waiting to get on board. And we took the opportunity to preach the pilot. Of course, with, he was a serious Christian. I was, I was glad about that. You know. So that, that opportunity came. We didn't leave him. So be ready to preach the gospel everywhere. Live to please God. Don't get into a workplace and then the first thing they tell you is, this place, hey, this place is, is serious. We don't preach here. And then you conform. No. Yes. What you do is, when they say that, keep quiet, go back to your knees. I conquered the system. I prevail. In that system, doors will open. One day you get opportunity to enter the MD's office. It is you and him. It's not shouting around. You don't know that MD needs the gospel. All these limitations are means and ways of cutting people from hearing the gospel, but they need it. They don't know that's what they are looking for, but that's what they are looking for. Jesus said the harvest is truly ripe. There's no problem with the harvest. The people are there. They just don't know that what they need is the gospel of Jesus. But we need to know. And don't think that the people will not hear. They will hear. They will listen. If you pray and you go. So when they say, we don't preach, don't, don't argue with the system. Just keep quiet and start praying. The Lord will give you strategies. One by one, you start entering their offices. And when you sit down, you are chatting. You start the gospel. You'll be amazed that in the same organization where they say, don't preach Jesus, you will Lead all of them to Jesus Christ. By the time they wake up, they are starting a cell in that place. If the MD gets born again, and the board director gets born again, who can form the law against the preaching again? They will be the ones to help you to start a cell. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe we have eaten some meat this week, and we've been awakened. Listen, we said here that the truth is that humans need a gospel. It is the only hope they have out of the tyrannical rule of the devil in this world. If you are willing to do the will of the Father, there will always be a way. Remember, you are first here to make humans sons of God before being a doctor, a mason, a teacher, a banker, a lawyer, and so on. Choose to live to please God. Only by making sons out of humans. Then you can add on to the rest. If you meet the primary call, all that you are doing has no foundation and it shall not stand. The Lord sent me this week to stir you up. If you're a banker from this week, you can't go and interrupt the tellers all the time. But once in a while, maybe you're a bank manager, call to speak to a client, chat with him. And in the midst of that, do you know Jesus? Don't be afraid that they will report you. You see, if you work with the Holy Spirit, there's no system that can outwit you. You will bring every rebellion under control. You are working together with God. You are not alone. That is where your confidence should be. Let's do this work because we have prevailed already over every system. Let's pray for the gospel around the world. Let's pray. The sons of God will be enlightened, will be awakened, to be confident in the spirit, and that doors will be opened everywhere. Imagine we are praying and the doors are going to be open and people don't step in. They must step in. Let's pray that doors are opened and sons of God are having access to kings, to presidents, to prime ministers, to fishermen, to farmers, to people of all caliber, and preaching the gospel and bringing them into Christ. Shall we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Mosata kaba. Malaki zote ke parakata. Oh, bazo komate ke pahaka doshata kaba. Oh, man de ke baraka soto. Mori kasata. Doors be opened in all the nations of the in every city. Libo sotoba. In the corridors of power. Liga do on the streets, in the ghettos. Koma no mosata. In the brothels. Kalizo preketa. On the farms, in the factories. Kolia zotaka. Mende go bosakata. In the schools and companies. Rende kuba la kiza. In the business arena, doors are open for the gospel. Hearts are open for the gospel. Men are getting born again. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So I've been watching me today, and you have not yet received Jesus. This is where it begins. 
God's plan for your life is to move you from being a human to a son of God by giving you the life of Jesus. How do you get it? It's a spiritual life. So you get it by a spiritual means. Believe with all your heart that Jesus died and rose again. Declare him as Lord. And something will take place in your spirit. It is called the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. As stated in Titus chapter 3 verse 5. And when that happens in you, you'll be born again as a son of God. And the beautiful story begins. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit as I declare Jesus is Lord. Thank you that I'm born again. Hallelujah. If that is all your heart, truly you are born again. I inspire you to remain connected to the glory of devotion and receive truth that will help you to grow in Christ. And also, wherever you are on the surface of the earth, look for a Bible teaching and practicing church and get yourself planted in it and remain in Christ until he comes because he is going to come very soon. If Jesus tarries, I'm going to meet you again on our special weekend edition of Metro TV, 10 p.m. on Saturday and on Sunday. And by the grace of God, we'll return to you on Monday on the regular schedules. Wow. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Binder. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on the screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.